Pakistan have long been iron friends and all-weather partners of strategic cooperation. China has also been Pakistan's largest trading partner for four years in a row. However, Pakistan's trade deficit with China, which accounts for over 30 percent of the country's overall trade deficit, further widened last year. How is Pakistan using its guest of honor status at the first China International Import Expo to explore opportunities in the Chinese market and to overcome the trade imbalance between the two sides? I'm pleased to be joined by His Excellency Assad Umar, the Finance Minister of Pakistan. Mr. Umar, thank you very much for accepting our interview. Most welcome. As one of the 12 guests of honor, uh, what has Pakistan prepared for this, the very first China International Import Expo? Well, there's a big Pakistani delegation here. We've got almost 75 companies which are either already exporting into China or some of the prospective exporters who are here. Uh, we've got a big pavilion. Uh, so both the, the government as well as the private sector is here in significant trend because it's a unique opportunity. I mean, we were discussing this this evening. It's probably the first import expo in the world. Countries hold export uh, expos. This is the first time a country is holding an import expo. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that Pakistan has prepared a, a, a wide variety of products such as textile or leather goods or sports goods, surgical equipment. How would you describe the competitiveness of Pakistani export? in the global market? For some of these products that you have uh, just mentioned, Pakistan is uh, considered either the global leader or amongst the leaders. Uh, sporting goods, the most famous thing which everybody in the world recognizes, uh, of course, is the biggest sporting event in the world, which is the World Cup football. And for many, many years now, the World Cup football is paid by footballs made in Pakistan. Uh, and, 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 and in different sports also, there's really world-class products which come out of Pakistan. Uh, surgical goods, uh, outstanding products which come in. Uh, textile is the biggest export of Pakistan. Uh, generally, when big textile expositions take place, the Pakistani pavilion is called the home of home textiles. Mm. So particularly in home textiles, it's very, very big. It's big in denim. Uh, people around the world like jeans these days. Even the Chinese wear a lot of jeans, so uh, a lot of denim manufacturing taking place there. Uh, so a variety of uh, industries where Pakistan has got globally competitive products. Um, however, when we look at the um, volume of trade or the balance of trade, it seems that uh, there is a lot to be worked on. For instance, in the fiscal year ending in 2018, the, trade, the overall trade deficit of Pakistan stands at some 37.7 billion US dollars and about over 30 percent coming with China, uh, meaning Pakistan's trade deficit with China stood at 9.7 billion US dollars, if I'm correct. So um, how does Pakistan see the reasons behind such a uh, huge trade deficit with China and that it has been expanding as well over the past years? Uh, what has been the impact of such widening deficit? Okay. Uh, actually, the trade deficit with China is probably even a little bit more than that. Uh, but that's not China's fault, and mostly this increase in trade deficit that you talked about is actually because of something good. Uh, there has been a lot of investment in Pakistan uh, under the framework of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, and uh, there's almost 10,000 megawatts of power projects which have been set up, uh, and these investments have led to machinery imports into Pakistan from China, and that has increased the trade deficit. Uh, Pakistan has traditionally not been an export-oriented economy. Uh, it's our experience, our growth trajectory has been somewhat different from what the East Asian countries, including what China has uh, gone through, where there has been a very, very strong export focus. And that's something that the new government is trying to change. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, the East Asian uh, strategy of the last 50 to 60 years has worked. It's lifted more people out of poverty than ever in human history. And, and therefore, we will be making a very conscious effort to diversifying our export base and putting much greater focus on exports rather than domestic consumption. I understand that China and Pakistan are also uh, negotiating phase two of the free trade agreement between these two sides so that they can boost trade and uh, uh, boost uh, mutual investment probably. Um, and I understand that ten rounds of negotiations have been held. Uh, where are we in terms of progress? Is there any likelihood, is there any chance that uh, the agreement can be reached before the end of 2018? Uh, before the end of 2018 might be difficult, uh, but we, that's again, as I said, was one of the major points that was discussed in the meetings with the 
Chinese leadership. In fact, there is a follow-up meeting which will be taking place next week, as early as next week. So the fresh uh, discussion or resumption of the FTA uh, dialogue will take place starting in the next uh, week or so. Uh, the target is by April when the next uh, round summit takes place. Before that, we should have concluded it. Uh, there is there is interest in it from both sides. Both Pakistan and China uh, want to conclude it and move towards an even more deeper economic engagement mm -hmm. uh, between Pakistan and China to take full advantage of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is probably the flagship uh, Belt Road Initiative project right now. Uh, and, and we want to showcase it uh, for, for the world uh, to show the benefits of this relationship. Well, the um, CPAC projects have also been used as an example by some in the world as uh, um, China's debt diplomacy trying to uh, gain um, influence in other countries through this kind of uh, quasi-economic activity. Uh, most recently, even a U.S. leader accused China of uh, playing debt diplomacy in the world and trying to gain its influence. So uh, I want to ask you what kind of concrete benefits, tangible things that uh, the CPEC project has brought to Pakistan and what are the obstacles the two countries are looking at to overcome in the near future? It's, uh, you're absolutely right, and I've been hearing some fantastic claims. In fact, soon after the elections had taken place in Pakistan, uh, the government had not yet been formed. Uh, Mr. Pompeo, the Secretary of State of the U.S., gave a statement uh, talking about Pakistan's China debt problem. Uh, and, I, and I wasn't yet uh, sworn in as a minister, but it was widely understood that I will be the incoming finance minister. Mm -hmm. So I had to respond and I had to say, what did you say? Uh, that Pakistan has a debt problem for sure, but Pakistan does not have a China debt problem. And, and I and suggested in a friendly manner to Mr. Pompeo that he should worry about his China debt problem rather than worry about Pakistan's because the U.S. owes China $1.3 trillion. China is the biggest lender in the world to the U.S. Uh, the, the whole idea of CPEC being some kind of a sinister plan by China uh, to, to cause economic problems to Pakistan is absolute nonsense. It's an example of cooperation between two countries which is in the benefit of both sides. It's not just in Pakistan's side, uh, interest or in China's interest. But it's really in give us some interest. examples. So specifically, yeah, some what, was, what is Pakistan's big problem? Pakistan's big problem is we have very low savings rate and therefore not enough capital to invest in the development needs of the country. Right? And specifically one of the problems that we were, uh, we were facing was severe shortages of electricity. These about two-thirds or a bit more than that of the total CPEC investment went into the power generation sector. So Pakistan got the capital that it needed, the finances that it needed mm -hmm. to set up this power generation capacity. China, on the other hand, has surplus capital and it wants to deploy that capital in the rest of the world. So it got very good returns, handsome returns for the capital which it deployed under the CPEC umbrella in Pakistan. And of course, the Chinese uh, high-tech products got exported into the country, into Pakistan. So both sides gain from it, and this is just the cooperation that, uh, that you would want to see between two countries. Well, just now you were talking about uh, the debt problem being not a China debt problem, but an overall debt problem. However, by the uh, second quarter of 2018, the external debt of Pakistan increased to 95.1 billion U.S. dollars. So could you break it down roughly to us? How much of it is owed to China and how much of a burden is it really to Pakistan? Okay, the, the, uh, the country debt, the government-to-government -government debt from of Pakistan that it owes to China is less than 10% of this total and it's about 10% of the total public debt that Pakistan owes. So 90% of the public debt that Pakistan owes is owed to countries other than China, either to multilateral institutions or other bilateral lenders. Hmm. So as a total portfolio of Pakistan's public debt, uh, China debt is, as I said, barely about $110. So it's not a very, very significant number. And uh, the issue is the, the problem that Pakistan faces actually is not even that the debt is very big. Because if you look at our total debt as a percentage of our GDP, mm. it's high, but it's, it's manageable. The big problem for Pakistan, the reason why debt sustainability is a problem in Pakistan is we don't have enough exports. We just are not generating enough foreign currency uh, inflows to be able to service this debt. And that's a fundamental problem. Um, Pakistani goods 
need to be competitive, right? You are competing with uh, uh, goods from all over the world. Um, although we are iron brothers, but the consumers ultimately, ultimately will pick the products based on their merit. So uh, what are some of the things that Pakistan is doing uh, or on, with the help of China to really boost export from Pakistan? There, if you break it down into like two or three critical elements, one is infrastructure. You need infrastructure to have high productivity capacity to produce competitive goods, right? And that's what CPEC first phase was about. It was all about infrastructure, power generation, mm -hmm. road networks, ports. Uh, the second element is the skill level of the, of the workers in the country. Productivity levels will determine your competitiveness. Uh, and Pakistan has uh, made that a priority. It's, uh, if you know a little bit about the political party that, that I belong to, it was all about youth orientation and getting the right skills for the youth is, is really one of the highest priorities. And even in that, China is now partnering Pakistan and uh, the, the expansion of the CPEC framework which is taking place right now, an MOU got signed yesterday which is about socio-economic development. So we are even looking at partnership and skill development transfer. And then the macroeconomic policy reorientation that I talked about, uh, putting all those factors together. Uh, Pakistani workers are hardworking. They go all over the world. Half of Middle East is sure. being built by Pakistani workers. Even the intellectual talent of Pakistani, the best universities in the world, the top companies, corporations of the world, you'll find Pakistanis there. It's just providing them the right environment, the right policy yeah. mix in Pakistan. And they'll produce goods which, which people in Shanghai would want to buy. Well, just now you talked about the first phase of the CPEC and, and actually um, your new Prime Minister Imran Khan, uh, before he visited China, he was talking about a new phase of uh, uh, the CPEC project. He was talking about uh, inviting more Chinese investment and uh, uh, creating special economic zones. So would you want to elaborate a little bit more on that and what can we expect in terms of bilateral ties of this new phase? Yeah. As I said, the first phase was about Infrastructure. That was the priority for the first phase. The next phase is all about now converting this CPEC, which is the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, into a true economic corridor, which means it's about industrial growth, agriculture, trade. Mm -hmm. So the focus of the next round is all going to be about uh, getting our agriculture more productive, creating agricultural surpluses, making our industry more competitive, particularly export-oriented industry and using the spatial economic zones to export out of Pakistan uh, to, anywhere else, to anywhere in the world, but particularly also to China. So that's the next phase. It's, and, and what people are going to see in Pakistan as a result of this is very significant job creation and significant export acceleration. The two biggest objectives for the current government are exactly these objectives. Uh, job creation, employment opportunities for the youth, as well as ex export growth. And uh, CPEC partnership is now uh, moving towards exactly that direction. Thank you very much. We're going to leave it there. The uh, Finance Minister of Pakistan, Your Excellency Assad Umar. Thank you very much. Most welcome.